Hey there, physics friends. This is Sean Lally, your instructor, and I want to teach you how to use video analysis. So what I uh, want you to do in this lab is to perform a video analysis of some kind of motion. So the first thing you have to do is you have to shoot a short phone video. And this can be anyone or anything that you want to capture just a few seconds of. Uh, five to ten seconds should be enough. It can be you walking or running. It can be a basketball shot. It could be a ball rolling down an incline or a hill or something thrown up, thrown down. Whatever you want to do should work. Again, only just a few seconds of motion should be enough. Ideally, some accelerated motion. So first thing you need to do is to um, get yourself ready with your phone. You're going to shoot horizontal video do not shoot in HD. I think that might be the default on some of the newer iPhones, so please do not shoot in HD. You have to change it in your settings. Shoot it with your phone still, uh, horizontally, so landscape mode, first of all. Shoot it still. Do not track the motion. You don't have to put your phone on a tripod, but it could help. I, I think it's probably overkill to do that. Just shoot it still. Again, do not track the motion. You need to have something in the frame as some kind of measurement tool. Now, this could be a ruler. It could be a meter stick, though you probably don't have one of those handy. Uh, it could be even be an index card, something that you can use to identify a fixed measurement. So if you use an index card, the long end of the regular index card would be five inches. Uh, you have to that somewhere in there because that's going to give you a, it's going to basically give you a scale that you can set to have uh, accurate measurements on your video. You're going to try and capture the motion for at least a meter. You want to ideally capture it from start to finish, but I'd say at the very bare minimum, capture it from start to wherever um, it ends up in the frame. Once it goes out of the frame, then there's nothing you can do with it. Again, do not shoot in HD. So let's assume that you make a good video, and let me show you what to do. So first thing you want to do is launch Logger Pro, which I am going to do right here. So this is what happens when you have Logger Pro come up. You want to, and by the way, all of this is described in the handout, the lab handout for lab three. Go to insert, and you're going to insert a movie. So there's a whole lot of defaults actually in the uh, the program, but you want to find your video. Now you either saved it on your desktop, more likely, or possibly in your Google folder, wherever you saved it. So the video I am choosing is a car that's moving down a plane. I'm going to show you this video. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Let me show you the actual video. It was shot just a couple of seconds of a car that's accelerating down a plane. So I'm going to drag this back to the beginning, all the way to the beginning. And first thing I ask you to do is to click on this little trajectory icon. You have to do a couple of things. You choose the fourth thing down again. This is all described in the handout. This says set scale. So I actually have a meter stick right here. You click on the beginning of it and drag this to the end. Once I let go, it's going to ask me for the value of that length. The default is one meter, and sure enough, I use a meter stick, so that is indeed one meter. Having done that, I have now set the scale completely for the entire lab, both horizontally and vertically. Next thing you want to do is go to the third thing down that says set origin. I'm going to pull that over here. You can put it pretty much anywhere. It doesn't really matter. But put it close to the beginning of the motion, maybe a little bit before it. And that puts an axis right here, a y-axis and an x-axis. And that's, that's it. That's really, we're now ready to go. So I am going to chick, uh, click on this, which says add point, and I'm going to start adding points. So if um, in my video, this actually starts immediately, but you may have a couple of seconds of lead in video where nothing happens. So then if that's the case, then you want, probably want to advance your film before you do any of these adding of points. Advance the film to where the action kind of starts. My action starts immediately, so that was just kind of fortuitous and kind of lucky. I don't even think I meant to do it that way. So I'm going to start adding points, and you choose a part on the object that you can see the whole time. I'm going to do the front of the car. So when I do that, I click my first point. Every time I do that, you see it advances the frame, and then I just click again, the same location on the car, and I keep doing it. It keeps advancing the frame. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to get it as close as you can to this and make sure it's the same point 
every single time. You can notice in the back the graph is already being drawn. You might even actually notice that there's two graphs being drawn, some red dots and some blue dots. We'll get to that in a moment. So I'm going to keep adding points. You're probably wondering, boy, wouldn't it be cool if this did it automatically? And there is a version that actually does it automatically, but this particular version does not do it automatically. And the honestly, the automatic one doesn't work flawlessly either. So this is pretty quick. So you just keep adding points. And I'd say, in the lab, I say to do for at least 10 points, but I'd actually like to, you to go to the end of the motion. It just takes a few more seconds. And mine's accelerating, so they get further and further away. You sometimes have to pull your cursor away so you can see where the car is. Just a few more to go. Even if you look at the dots, you can tell they're getting further away. This car is definitely accelerating. It's a small ramp. So what we're doing is a motion capture. This version is not automatic, but still, this will give us lots to work with, a whole lot of data. This is shot with an iPhone, which I have to confess, I'm not sure. I think it's 20 frames per second. I don't think it's 24 or 25, but I don't know. You should look that up. I can't remember what iPhones shoot. I feel like it's got to be 20 or 24 or 25. Who knows? So I'm just going to go to the end of the track. And when I'm done, there's nothing else you really have to do. I'm just going to now minimize my video. I'm just going to kind of shrink it. And look at that. There's your graph right there. All the data is over here. You see that there's a whole lot of data points. You can scroll down and see how many. Oh, it looks like I've got 62 dots. The actual amount of time right there is two seconds. Oh, so wait a minute. Maybe that's actually 30 frames a second. That would make sense, actually, if I've got 62 dots in, in just over two seconds. So I get maybe an iPhone is 30 frames per second. Somebody can tell me what's going on. Now, look at the default here. I've got X dots and Y dots. The X dots actually represent the X motion of this. Oops, let's get back here. The X dots represent the X motion. That's the horizontal motion. The Y dots represent the vertical motion. And if you can't remember that, Basically, all you have to do is just, um, you can kind of tell, see, the vertical motion doesn't really change. It basically just goes in a straight line, more or less. It, it inclines a little bit because of my frame. That's not a slightly off kilter video that I shot. But in the red motion, it's clearly accelerating. Kind of goes at a straight constant velocity there for a few frames, and then it really accelerates here. So at this point, I'm going to ask you to analyze the motion. So get a screenshot of this. Attach your screenshot of your displacement versus time graph. And now you can start to play over here. Click. Go down to more. I mean, you can do one thing at a time. If you just want X, you can just do X. If you just want Y, you can just do the Y position. But after you get a, a, a graph of the X and the Y, get down to more. And I want you to do X velocity and Y velocity and get rid of Y while we're at it. Oops, there you are. So there's the X velocity and Y velocities right here. And um, so this actually will give you some numbers. Look at the, how the Y velocity basically is zero here, but the X velocity, now you can actually, uh, I was hoping we could scroll in here. I know there's a way to do it, but you know, anyway, I won't bother with that right now. So, you, but you can click on data points and you can get actual values. And you can also get them off of the data table here too, if you want, that's all the data values you have. Uh, this Y velocity values are all negative just because they're below the Y axis. Don't worry about those. The X velocities are, they starting here at 0.515 and looks like they end up at right here to 0.773. Now at this point, this is where clearly it must slow down, probably hits the very end. So what I ask you to do at this point is to look at the graphs and get me some information off of those graphs. The things that I ask for are going to be this is way better video I had before. Um, the things I asked for, give me the total displacement, give me the maximum velocity, give me the time to reach maximum velocity, give me the acceleration. Note that you can get this stuff several different ways. If you have a nice linear um, velocity versus time graph, take the slope of it, and the slope will give you the acceleration. And to get the slope, all you have to do, you would come up to, I'm going to actually change this to just x velocity. So... 
we could do that and I could choose a linear fit under oh I'm sorry under uh, analyze and linear fit right there would give you the uh, slope and I have to confess I'm looking at these last data points here and I think they're problematic so instead of those I'm actually gonna get rid of that and I'm just gonna choose highlight the data that I care about let's go with this data and now let's do a linear fit of that so linear fit of that is actually 0.3080 meters per second per second and I only chose these ones right here and even if I wanted to be a little bit crazier I could really just probably um, could uh, sorry let's let's go back to the X and I'm just gonna get rid of some of this data let's get rid of the last few data points where it's or better yet let's uh, do that with the velocities the X velocities and we just get rid of the last few data points Well, okay, yeah, it's not allowing me to do that, but anyway, you should be able to get rid of all that. Okay, well, you'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so that's what I want you to do in the lab. It's actually fairly quick. It probably took me as long to explain it as it will be for you to do it. Make sense? All right, friends, good luck, and um, I'll see you in a week.